I have known Terry Fulmer for over 40 years, since the time I was an intern and she was a young nurse covering the medical units at Beth Israel Hospital in Boston. Late one night, despite our inexperience and fright about the fate of a young patient who was in the throes of an acute medical crisis, Terry calmly took control and worked as a team member to achieve a favorable outcome. From this early start of our careers, I knew these traits would enable her to make a positive impact on this world, and that she has. Over the past several decades, I've worked with Terry on committees, boards, and other projects. During that time, my admiration and respect for her have continued to grow. Her advocacy and commitment to older persons and to her profession are legendary. As the visionary that she is and was then, Terry recognized the value of academic clinical partnerships and reached out to develop that relationship. She was one of the first to conduct cutting edge research on elder abuse, a critically important topic that she brought to national attention, inspiring federal policies, rigorous research, and the careers of her mentees. I first began working with Terry Fulmer over 20 years ago. She was leading a large, complicated, and challenging grant, the Geriatrics Interdisciplinary Team Training Program, or GIT. GIT was a success and was, in my opinion, at least a decade ahead of its time. Which was followed by her developing, implementing, and disseminating the Nurses Improving Care of Health System Elders, or NICH, as it is known, while she was co-director of the Hartford Institute for Geriatric Nursing at NYU which has greatly improved the care of older patients in hundreds of hospitals across our country. Currently, as president of the John A. Hartford Foundation, she is expanding her vision and working hard to create age-friendly health systems. With all the hats Terry has worn, she is always a nurse first. On September 11, 2001, she shed her academic duties to work as a nurse in the emergency department at a downtown New York hospital. Terry's values have formed the moral compass for her career, and her passion for quality health care for older adults has been the driving force. Terry exemplifies all of the qualities recognized by the Donald P. Kent Award, and despite all the responsibilities she holds, she remains laser-focused on improving the lives of others in need. And, thankfully, she's not done. Her relentless energy, passion, and values will continue to expand the body of knowledge and make our world a better place in which people can grow old. To me, Terry embodies a quote by Shirley Chisholm. You don't make progress by standing on the sidelines whimpering and complaining. You make progress by implementing ideas. Congratulations, Terry, on the Kent Award. You deserve it. I had the great good fortune to begin my professional nursing career at Boston's Beth Israel Hospital in 1975. There, under the visionary leadership of Drs. Mitch Rabkin, Joyce Clifford, and Trish Gibbons, my career thrived. In practice, I found myself drawn to the older patients, many who had survived their cardiac resuscitation or chemo, but were then left with functional decline and often they were suffering. I felt I could make a real difference in their care and I chose geriatric nursing as my career path to make that difference. Little could I have imagined that only a short time later, the Division of Geriatric Medicine at the Beth Israel would get underway under the leadership of Jack Rowe and Richard Besting. The inauguration of the Harvard Division on Aging followed soon thereafter, where I joined the faculty. I collaborated with a remarkable peer group, superstars in the field, Terry Weddle, Jack and Richard, Ken Meineker, Lou Lipsitz, Neil Resnick, Susie Greenspan, Sue Levkoff, Mark Beers, Leba Kravitz, Kate Morency, Jerry Avorn. I list names at my own peril as every member of the division, students, staff, and faculty alike, left a mark on my heart, and I thank you. My patients have been my real teachers, and I never fail to be humbled by the lessons I gather at each clinical encounter. They often have shown more strength and goodwill than we might expect. Those experiences have taught me about and led to my lifelong passion for the eradication of elder abuse and neglect. My students over many years have also provided me with insight, humility, and I must say, a lot of laughter. From my Boston College clinical groups at Mass General to my doctoral students at NYU and Northeastern, we know we are all in this together, whether finishing a dissertation or giving a first poster presentation. 
You've listened, taught me much, and become my colleagues and my friends. Thank you to my lead nominators, Mary Tinetti, recalling fond memories from our Yale days in the HOPE Project, to our current age-friendly health system work together. Thank you, Mary. And to David Rubin, from our GITT days to our current dementia care work, thank you. And then the very special Harvey Cohen, who coached me into leadership roles at GSA. Thank you, Harvey. I know others among you wrote in support of this award, and I'm grateful to each of you. GSA has been an anchor for me, and my interdisciplinary colleagues and friends have enriched my career beyond measure. It's like having an extended family when you think about it, and I smile at the number of hours we've all logged together. Thank you, James Appleby, for your leadership. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge my deepest heartfelt respect and thanks to the John A. Hartford Foundation, the trustees, and my wonderful colleagues there who have done so much to improve care for older adults through their thoughtful grant making and commitment to the field. The entire staff is a gift to me every day. It was the foundation's support that made it possible for me to advance the niche program, the Geriatric Interdisciplinary Team Training Program, the Hartford Institute for Geriatric Nursing, the Hartford Center for Gerontological Nursing Excellence, and the wonderful age-friendly health system work that's going on as we speak. The best comes last. My wonderful family, my devoted husband Keith, our amazing kids, Nina, Holly, Sam, and my dear sister Patty and her husband Charlie who are with me today. They've always been my biggest fans and can recite the four M's, tell you all about the age-friendly health system movement, as well as the niche program. They've listened with great patience over the years and helped inform my work. To all of you here today, thank you for this incredible Donald P. Kent Award. You are the reason older adults are benefiting from your science, teaching, caring, and commitment. Have a great 2019 meeting here in Austin. Thank you. <laughs>